Without having dinner, Nidhu has fallen asleep while reading her textbook. The following is the sequence in her dream. Hello, Nidhu. Nidhu is startled and start looking in the direction of the voice. Hey, here. Look, here it's me. Don't be afraid. I'm your friend. I know you didn't have dinner. Would you like to have this fruit? Well, I like fruits. But I'm not really hungry. How will you grow big and strong unless you eat good food? What has food got to do with my growth? Can you tell me what is growth? I know what growth is. But I don't know how to explain it to you. Okay. Can you tell me if you have grown since your birth? Yes, of course. And how do you know that? Mm -hmm. Because my body has increased in size and weight. Haha, <laughs> that's right. So, how does the body of organisms grow? I can't say exactly. Can you please explain? Of course, I will. You see, Nidhu. When number of cells in the body of organism increases, size of most of the tissues and organs increases and this leads to overall growth of the organism. We see this growth externally as increase in size and weight of entire body of the organism. So, how is growth related to the food? Well, I said just now that number of cells in the body increases and growth occurs. It means that new cells are being produced by the existing cells to achieve growth of the body. This in turn means that more matter and energy will be required by the existing cells of the body of an organism to achieve the growth. Can you tell me from where do these body cells get matter and energy? I think the answer is food. Yes, food that you eat contains variety of chemical substances, matter termed as nutrients. Now, nutrients nourish the cells of the body and also provide them energy to function properly. Thus, nutrients in food enable the body cells to become healthy to do their work grow and produce more cells like themselves. In this way, the organism grows and develops from a baby or young one into a healthy adult. Some of these nutritive substances or nutrients are required by the cells in large amounts and are termed as macronutrients. Example, carbohydrates, proteins, fats. While some nutrients in food are required in very small amounts for growth and development and are termed as micronutrients, example, vitamins, minerals, etc. Okay, so now I understand how food is related to growth and development of our body. However, I do not know whether there is any difference between growth and development of the body of an organism. Yes, indeed. There is quite a lot of difference. Let me explain. Growth is quantitative phenomena. When cells increase in numbers or their mass increases, it leads to increase in size and weight of the body of an organism. We call it growth. Development is qualitative phenomenon. For example, if we compare muscles in body of human baby and adult human being, we know that in adult body muscle tissues has more cells and has grown a lot in size and mass. At the same time, we observe that along with growth in the muscle size, there is increase in strength of the muscles. Muscles in children are generally weak as compared to adults. Adults perform more rigorous actions and heavy work with great ease in their day-to-day -day life. Similarly, we know that the capacity of immune system to fight and protect against diseases is better in adults as compared to children. Even functions of the brain such as memory, logical thinking, reasoning and decision making become better with age in humans. These are all development related changes. 
So we can say that growth is about quantitative increase and development is about qualitative improvement. Food provides nutrients which help in both growth and development of organisms. So just like us, do you plants also undergo growth and development? Yes, of course. Have you not seen a small sapling grow into big tall tree anywhere around you? Yes, many times. I've seen tiny and small plants of different types grow big and tall in gardens, our school compound, by the roads, quite often. Though I have never seen any plant eating food. <laughs> we, that is all green plants, do not depend on other living things or organisms for getting our food. We follow autotrophic mode of nutrition. What does that mean? Well, nutrition is the process by which an organism obtains nourishment that involves taking in food, digesting it and assimilating the nutrients from food for growth and development of the body. Autotrophic is two words of Greek origin that is auto and trophic. Auto means self while trophic trophy, relates to nourishment or food. Thus, it simply means self-nourishing or self-nourishment. Plants do not eat food because instead of using the other organisms as food, plants use simple inorganic chemicals present in air, water and soil as nutrients and prepare organic chemicals like carbohydrates, amino acids, proteins, oils and fats which they require for their own growth and development. In other words, plants make their own food by utilizing simply air, water and soil. That's fascinating. How do you do it? We, means all green plants, use the process of photosynthesis. Photo plus synthesis. Photo here means light and synthesis is to make. In this process, plants use light as the source of energy and simple inorganic chemicals namely carbon dioxide and water to produce organic chemical glucose in their cells. Glucose is carbohydrate which is most commonly used nutrient by all cells as source of energy and for making other complex organic chemicals. In this manner, the light energy is converted into chemical energy. The excess glucose is stored in the cells of plants in form of starch. Hey, even we drink water. We also produce carbon dioxide in our body during respiration and there is light around us in form of sunlight as well as artificial light but we don't perform photosynthesis. Can you tell me why? Oh, okay. Well, that is because all green plant cells have special pigments and enzymes which animal cells lack. We have green pigment chlorophyll in our leaf cells which traps light energy. Our leaves also have minute pores on the surface through which carbon dioxide from air enters into the leaf cells, while the root cells absorb water and minerals from the soil. This water and minerals are then transported from the roots to stem branches and leaves using xylem tissue. The chloroplasts present in the leaf cells are the cell organelles where the process of photosynthesis actually occurs. The byproduct of this process is oxygen, which diffuses out into the air from stomata of the leaves. Do the stomata of the leaves also absorb nitrogen from air to use it in synthesis of amino acids and proteins? Most of the plants absorb nitrogenous compounds from the soil along with other minerals such as phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, iron, zinc, manganese to name a few. However, there are few plants which with aid of certain microorganisms present in soil are able to utilize atmospheric nitrogen from air near the soil surface and air between soil particles. Common example is leguminous plants. These plants have tiny nodules on their roots where rhizobium bacteria grow in symbiotic association with root cells. 
the rhizobium bacteria fix atmospheric nitrogen that is they absorb nitrogen gas and convert it to nitrogen compounds like nitrates and make it available to root cells the nitrogen is then transported in dissolved form along with water via xylem to aerial parts of plant for use does it mean that only the green leaves perform the photosynthesis and produce organic nutrients from simple inorganic chemicals is it what about the requirements of other parts of the plant like stem and roots don't those parts require nourishment to grow well just like green leaves young green stems and tender green branches also perform photosynthesis all the nutritive substances like glucose amino acids fatty acids etc synthesized in the green parts of the plant are transported to the other non green parts such as cells of the roots branches stems etc of the plant via phloem tissue for either their use or storage thank you for explaining everything so well all this discussion involving food and nutrition is now making me really hungry I'll take your leave now and ask my mom to give me some hot food. That's better. Eat good food and stay fit and healthy. Goodbye. Summary points. In this session we have aimed to focus on the following aspects. Understanding the concept of growth and development in organisms. Understanding relationship between food and growth and development of organisms. Explaining and understanding of the terms nutrition, autotrophic nutrition, photosynthesis. covering the basic process of photosynthesis in green plants understanding transports of various substances from one part to another in plant body introduction to the phenomena of nitrogen fixation by microorganisms you should be able to answer the following questions now what is growth how is growth of organism measured explain the terms nutrients and nutrition define the term photosynthesis which chemicals are used by plants during photosynthesis what are the products formed during photosynthesis where does photosynthesis take place in green plant cells what is the function of xylem and phloem in plants in case you are unable to answer any of the above questions i would suggest you to go through this session again